yeah, good good morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. Uh, and yeah, good morning to the viewers as, as well. I hope you guys um, have a good Sabbath with us today. Um, we, we're very excited about this, this topic. Um, we are on lesson number five, and the title of the lesson today is uh, By Scripture Alone, Sola Scriptura. So we're going we're gonna to have a bit of a discussion around that today. But before we get into that, um, obviously, we all know that we're still in lockdown. And I just wanted to ask you guys, you know, what are, what are some of the things we're doing in our communities to, to uh, you know, be a witness and, and to share the gospel? Do you guys have any ideas? Yes. So a um, couple of weeks ago, um, we, as a family, decided that we want to do something for the elderly in our community. Um, and we decided that we will go and do some shopping um, and, and, and grab um, enough supplies for, for, you know, for a decent amount of time. And we divided that by eight, created eight parcels of food. And we asked one of the very prominent um, leaders, if I could say, in the community to come and collect it from us and then go and distribute it to those specific houses. Okay. Um, yeah, just to give some people some sort of relief, a little bit of um, releasing the pressure of That's the lockdown. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Any, anyone? Uh, we also have a, a similar like story also. Uh, the, the one of the ladies that actually is the chairperson of the community thing, um, she alerted the community that there were a few families actually struggling. They didn't really have money or, you know, food in their houses. And we went to checkers and we bought like, you know, potatoes, tomatoes, onions, you know, the, the basics that you would need to make a meal. And we divided that by four and we actually gave that to her, you know, just to, yeah, witness. I guess. That's great. That's great. Any any other thoughts? Um, well, in, terms, in my situation, I'm serving my online community. So basically, I'm just spreading the word through enlightening one of my friends in terms of the knowledge that they have on the Bible. So whatever questions that they have regarding the Bible, I just shed some light to that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Mm. Yeah, I know, I know um, what we're doing is um, with the kids at home, we, we're busy making little, little cards, um, actually like little bookmarks. And uh, you know, the kids are coloring in and glittering and doing all sorts of things with the little, you know, Jesus loves you message, you know, and and uh, since the beginning of the lockdown, we've been trying to make quite a few of these. Um, we haven't been able to hand them out yet because of the lockdown, but hopefully soon we'll be able to, um, right, we'll just drop them off in, in all the post boxes, make sure people know that that Jesus loves them. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a nice, it's a nice little, little um i suppose thought yeah. for, the, for the community so yeah i think it's important that we that we keep keep um alive the 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 mission of spreading the gospel and being a witness to the all the world yeah so mm -hmm. we should do that uh, as much as we can um mm -hmm. before we get cracking um into the study uh thanks for sharing guys appreciate that um Shall we open with a word of prayer? And I wanted to ask um, uh, Josh if you can open with prayer for us. Sure. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you once again that we can be gathered together as a youth online. And we thank you, Lord, for each and every viewer that is tuned in. And we pray, Lord, that you will bless um, the lesson that we will discuss now. Bless the heart of every viewer. And I pray, Lord, that the message that the Bible is is interpreting itself with um, will touch our hearts, will touch our lives, and hopefully we will be able to take the gems that we uncover and touch someone else's life. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, all right. So uh, the first the first thing I wanted to touch on we we spoke about um, sola scriptura. We've been working now through through the importance of scripture, um, and I suppose today is is a study that that really it culminates the importance of, of, of the Bible, Bible and, and Scripture as a whole. Um, the memory text um, is from Hebrews 4 verse 12. Bones, can you read that for us? Okay, I'm reading from the New International Version. And it says, 
For the word of God is living and active, mm. sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing and dividing soul and spirits, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Mm. I like that. It's 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 living and powerful, and um, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's that's amazing. Mm. Um, the word of God is truly alive and, and I suppose you can get to a place and it's happened to me where, where you read the Bible, you read scripture and, and it lacks life, you know, because sometimes I read it with all the baggage and perceptions in my eyes and baggage on my back. And, and sometimes, um, I don't, I don't get what enough out of it, not because the Bible doesn't have enough to give or that the Bible's dead, but because I, I don't, I don't seek that. And, uh, and I think it's important that when we approach the word of God, we approach it with a certain level of respect and, and reverence for what it is. It's God's word. And when we see it in that light, it, it packs a whole new meaning behind it. And, um, and if we read it in the right context with, with prayer uh, and ask God, you know, to, to reveal to us the truth in it, um, it becomes very much alive um, for us rather than just a book of old stories, right, um, which, which um, Hollywood would probably like us to, to read. Okay, so, so the Bible... The Bible um, it is a very interesting one because the the difference between the Roman church and the Protestant movement was this concept of sola scriptura. It was this mm. concept of, hang on a minute, but the the doctrine that, that you're teaching us, we can't we can't find that in the Bible. In fact, the Bible teaches us something quite different. And so you guys know the story of, of the of the early Reformation. Um, where Martin Luther and, and um, uh, certain peers that came after him as well uh, would read, read the Word of God and, and find, find conflict with, with, the, with the current theology of the time. Um, and, of course, we know about the, 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 the thesis that Martin Luther wrote, and it started this, this major uh, reformation called the Protestant Reformation. And essentially, that that changed um, uh, the whole scope of history into Mm. camps, the the Roman camp and, of course, uh, or Catholicism and then, of course, the the Protestants. And um, the the one thing that the Protestants were affirmed in is we will follow the word of God. Mm. And so on, on that backdrop... Um, I wanted to ask the question, um, what what are the consequences of not following the Word of God as our soul, um, uh, what do you call it, our soul um, authority? Josh? If we developed a, a attitude that the Bible, the Bible's there, but it, it, it doesn't have to be the, the only source of knowledge or interpretation. And we started developing our own ideas. Unfortunately, inevitably, we would develop a false view of God, of who God really is, because the Bible is the word of God and the law is a transcript of God's character. And if we, if we take those two things and we, and we misunderstand them, then we misunderstand God himself. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a discussion with someone, a work colleague, actually, quite, quite a while ago, um, that, uh, that went to a funeral. Um, and he, he, you know, at work we were talking about it, and, and he was talking about the fact that, um, that this person who passed away was, was with God in heaven. And, and I kind of said to him, you know, maybe we should, we should look at the word of God and, and see, you know, and I tried to, you know, very nicely try and, um, 
and, and we spoke a bit about the concept of death and what it is in the Bible. And then, um, and then also he, he raised to me saying, yeah, I've never thought about the people that reject God. They, they go to hell and they, they in this hell forever and ever burning and tormenting. And, um, and he said to me, he just, he just doesn't understand how people will serve a God that is so um, tyrannical, essentially, that you would make you, you would torture you for eternity, just for the f- a few years on earth that you, that you didn't follow him. And so you had this perception of God that was just so like way out. Um, and that's, and that's because you kind of de- people develop their own ideas based on maybe one text or whatever the case is, and they don't understand um, the word of God as a whole. Any any other thoughts? Um, something that came to mind right now is the fact that um, substantiating Josh's point, just adding some bit of juice to it, is the fact that um, you misunderstand God. And you also misunderstand the plan of salvation that he has for us. Yes, it's true. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. So, so, I mean, these are some of the consequences of not making the scriptures the absolute sole authority. Mm. Is, Is you don't have a clear picture of the plan of salvation. You have a false view of God. Um, what are some of the other consequences, Josh? Another consequence is, is, is disunity in the church because when one person develops an idea outside of the Bible, then what stops somebody else from creating another idea of their own? Mm. You know? Because they see, okay, you've developed something outside of the Bible based on your understanding. I understand it differently. Therefore, now you have two understandings, both outside the Bible, both creating a division and disunity yeah. in the church. Whereas if we all focus solely on the same source, we would all be in agreement. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and, and um, if you look at the Protestant movement now, I mean, think about how many different Protestant churches there are. And it's because um, some people have adopted doctrine that are not based solely on the Bible. Mm. Um, and and that, that's an area that causes disunity. <laughs> sure. Liam, what are your thoughts? I think ultimately your foundation of your belief will be weak and it will crumble. And through those cracks, deception, disunity, um, conflicts that will, that will arise because you don't have a base. Yeah, there's no foundation. Mm. Yeah, when the, when the base is not solid and it's, and it's shifting the whole time, it's, it creates conflict and, and certainly you are very susceptible to deception for sure mm-hmm. i think it also it also uh, gives room to church tradition taking authority now so oh. i mean you know a leader can now bring in their view of things and now because you don't really understand it for yourself you just go with it because you know might as well just take their view because maybe they know more than me so i think that's also when church tradition starts actually taking authority over over things yeah. Over the bar. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's a very important one as well. Um, and I suppose that leads me to another question, which is, which is um, what, what should we do when, when there is a message from, from the church, a, a pastor or someone preaching, and you hear it for the first, like uh, a particular message for the first time? What, what should we do with that? Should we just accept it as it is? Um, as it was preached, how, how should we approach it? Go home and study it for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's very important. I, I think yeah. you nailed it on the head. We've got to study it. Is there an example in the Bible of, of this happening, though? Yes, there is. There is. Right? Um, in the book of Acts, um, Paul visited Thessalonica. Um, and it was in chapter 17 where he actually commended, I think it was uh, the Bereans that he, that he commended, yes. that when he preached to them, they did not just accept it by faith, 
but they went home and studied it. I don't know if, if it would be great to actually turn there to Acts chapter 17. Should I read it? Yeah, if you've got it, verse 10 and 11. Um, okay, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Acts chapter 17, verse 10 and 11. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Mm. What I love about this verse, especially verse 11, is that they did not sit and listen to Paul with suspicion in their, in their minds. They didn't say, this guy, we haven't heard this before, he must be telling a lie, let's go and prove him wrong. But no, they accepted the truth that Paul was teaching with readiness of mind. And then on top of that, they went and searched it for themselves to discover it for themselves, to give them understanding and peace of mind. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, I think it's critical that when, when hearing a message, whatever the message is that you hear preached, mm-hmm. that, you, that you yourself go back and study the words. That's why you, you'll find, and not, many peop, not that many people do it, but some do, when, when the preacher preaches that they make notes, make notes, mm-hmm. write down the verses, go back, check it for yourself. You know, don't, don't just let someone read the text, take your Bible, open up the text and read it with that person so that you know for yourself what is written and how it's interpreted. Um, Because it's so easy to be deceived into a doctrine that is not biblically based um, and based on scripture. So the Bereans did this perfectly. uh, And I think that's an excellent example. and, And it's something that absolutely we should be doing. We should use the Bible as our sole authority. I've, I've seen sermons where there's a verse in the beginning and that's it. The rest of the entire sermon is just, you know, talking. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And sometimes you're like, what is the verse about even? I, you know, um, <laughs> it's very important that the, uh, that the messages that we got and we give are based squarely on the word of God. Definitely. So I want to I want to talk about about this um, this concept around around the Word of God because you've got the Old Testament, uh, you've got the New Testament, and and um, you know sometimes you can find uh, that the New Testament guys quote some of the stuff in the Old Testament. Um, what's what's the what's the golden thread? that throw, flows through the whole Bible. We say that the Bible is from God. But what's the golden thread that ties it all together? The Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And there's no question about it, right? Um, so, so, I mean, what, what are some of the, the differences between the Old Testament and the New Testament? What, what's, the, what, what's the difference between the two? I think the difference is that one is actually pointing to Christ and that's the Old Testament and the New Testament is that prophecy being fulfilled. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think I think the whole the, the Old Testament by the way the Old Testament points out the plan of salvation perfectly. Mm. Mm-hmm. The New Testament is fulfilling that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um I heard, it, I heard it said just the other day that the Old Testament is promises made. The New Testament are promises kept. That's beautiful. Mm. Um, and so that's, that's, also, that's also very interesting. Uh, I think the concept around this is we say that, that, that you know, Scripture's there, but it's not, all, it's not all that easy to understand. There's some texts that are a little bit more challenging, isn't it? Mm. Um, there's times that I've read the Bible and, and, and I mean, I just understand exactly what it's trying to tell me, but there's other times I read something and I have to read it again and I read it again and I'm scratching my head thinking, what's it actually saying to me? Yeah. Um, when you're approached with this kind of thing, how, how should we approach, well, how should we approach scripture when we are faced with 
difficult texts, you know, confusing texts maybe, or difficult to understand? How should we approach approach the Word of God at that point? Context. Okay, context. Let elaborate a little bit. So, if you're reading a text, let's say, for example, in the Book of Romans, and it's it's a little bit confusing, as Romans can be sometimes. Yeah. Um, it's not only important to read the verse in context of its chapter, but also topical context. So if you're reading a verse about, like, let's say, for example, that story of um, the rich man and Lazarus, and, and people use that story, you know, when the rich man um, was burning in Hades and Lazarus is in the bosom of Abraham, people use that to justify that when you die, your soul goes either to heaven or to hell. Yes. So it's not important to read that story in context and to know that indeed it was a parable and not a true story. Mm. Um, it's also important to read that verse or that story in the context of the study of the state of the day. It's a topic. It's not just a chapter. It's a, it's a topical context. Mm. So to understand that point is extremely important. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's very important. I, um, we, I did some Bible studies a while ago. and. Um, in one of the Bible studies, it was actually on health. And um, what, one of the elements of the study was looking at clean and unclean foods. Um, and if that's still relevant to us today. And so we went to the Bible and we started looking at all these things. And one of the guys said, um, no, the Bible tells us we can eat anything. <laughs> oh. In the book of Acts, it tells us that, doesn't it? <laughs> it tells us that in the book of Acts, Peter has a dream, a vision, and there's this white cloth, and it's got all the unclean foods, and God says, if I've made it, <laughs> and, um, mm. and so... I've that debate before. No, so, so again, so, so, so in the Bible study, we said, okay, let's pause, and let's understand what, what is this telling us? Mm. And so you've got to go back to to the whole story that it's busy telling you, and it actually follows through into the next chapter. Mm -hmm. And you can very clearly see that, again, it was a vision. It wasn't, it, it, there was, the unclean food was a symbol of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. actually very clearly um, printed out, literally in that chapter and the following chapter, that it's all got to do with, with Peter's acceptance of the Gentiles. And he ended up going to a Gentile's house and, and many were converted um, there and were filled with the Holy Spirit. And um, when you start reading it in the context, then all of a sudden it makes sense, but it's not what you thought it was. Kelly? Mm -hmm. I think also another thing is to read different versions of the Bible because I think, you know, the King James Version is very, you know, strong you know, language that most people don't really understand. And, you know, some of the versions actually make it a little clearer. So you can actually understand a verse by reading it in different versions of the Bible. Yeah, mm. yeah I love that. I think that's a very good um, uh, illustration because you can read something in the King James um, and then sometimes, you know, another version just helps to understand some of these words uh, a bit better. Mm. Um, especially with the Greek, um, which the English, yeah. the English language just doesn't have, you know, the same amount of meaning, I don't know, packed behind it. Mm. So, so some of the yeah. different versions can give slightly different words for the same thing. Um, and it can just help you understand better. So, yeah, I like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. Anything else? How should we approach um, complex, difficult to understand texts? Josh, you have some other thoughts? Yes, um, we also need to stop assuming that the unexplained is unexplainable. Just because okay. you come across a text and you don't understand its explanation, it doesn't mean that there is no explanation for it. Maybe you just haven't come across it yet. Maybe somebody else has. And therefore, further digging is extremely important so that you can discover the truth that is unexplained to you at that point in time. And then also talking to people, asking people who are maybe more knowledgeable than you, you know, and that's where humility comes into play as well. You know, mm -hmm. to go to people 
and, and talk about it, discuss it, ask about it, um, so that you can get the answer to your question. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Okay. So some other thoughts, perhaps? Comparing scripture with scripture. You know, like some verses explain the meaning of others. You know, so you, you read yeah. a certain verse and you don't really understand it. There is another verse that might explain the meaning of that verse that you were reading. So, you know, it's just to compare scripture with scripture because we are told that most, most of the time, you know, scripture interprets itself. Yeah, and I think this is important. I mean, just look at the life of Jesus. What did, what, what did he say? He, he, when, he was tempted, when he was tempted in the wilderness, he said, it is written. It is written. Mm. When he was preaching to the people, he would say, have you not read? Mm. And then he would quote the Old Testament. When he was on the road to Emmaus with the two, with the two guys after his resurrection, he said to them, beginning at Moses and the prophets, throughout scripture, he explained things concerning himself. Wow. So, so again, you know, you've, you've got this concept of if you want to understand something, yeah, search the scriptures and pull out those nuggets that can, that can speak to that point. And I think that's, that's very important. Mm. Allow scripture to interpret itself. Very important. Yeah. Um, some of the other things I, I wanted to, I thought about personally was around um, uh, the Biblical Research Institute. Um, that's, that's a site that I've been on a number of times when I'm grappling with certain topics and, I, and I'm trying to research and I'm reading the Bible. Um, uh, it's a very good resource for, for, um, for content to, to, to help understand things as well. Um, that's a good one. And I suppose th there's another element um, which, which I think bears, bears mentioning, and that is that we can't fully know absolutely everything because there are some things in the Bible that is a mystery to us. There are some things in the Bible that just, we just have to wait until we get to heaven <laughs> before, we, before we can fully understand that. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote down a question here for myself. What should I not do? And uh, my answer, we, sh we should probably not go to Google. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the, the Lord gave us uh, brains. Uh, we are made intellectual beings. Mm -hmm. And we must study the scriptures. And the Holy Spirit has promised that the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. Mm. Yeah. Um, what's that? John, John chapter 16, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 14, 15, and 16. Those three give us a lot of information about, about the Holy Spirit. One of the things is that the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. So when we're faced with a difficult challenge, I think one of the key underpinning elements is that um, we, must, we must begin with prayer. We must understand um, prayer as as we as we approach the bible and ask god for guidance ask the holy spirit to lead us into all truth and and we will be led into all truth yeah i think that's yeah. That, that's important i um, think that there's also an ellen g white uh, quote here in, from education page uh, 190 and it says the bible is its own exposit expositor Scripture is to be compared with scripture. The student should learn to view the word as a whole and to see the relation of its parts. He should gain a knowledge of its grand central theme of God's original purpose for the world, of the rise of the great controversy and of the work of redemption. Wow. Hmm. That's a beautiful text. And I think, I think that's, that's important. <laughs> we wouldn't need the testimonies had we studied the scripture for us all. Mm. Um, mm. And I think, I think there's, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of truth, truth behind that. Um, I can speak for myself for many, many years. I, I just, I didn't read, I didn't study the Bible as I, as I should have. Um, mm. And, and I, I am now, and, I, and I'm glad that, that, um, 
I'm, I'm able to study the word now, but, but I lost out so many years of not studying the word of God. Kelly? Um, mm. Just on that point that you just mentioned now, I was actually in studying this lesson through this week, and I came upon, uh, you know, across this of, you know, we should study the scripture for ourselves and not just use, um, I think, Ellen White's books to, to, you know, kind of replace it. And it actually opened my eyes because that's what I would actually do, you know, to read Ellen G. White more than the Bible. And when I actually read this and I studied this lesson for myself, I actually opened my Bible and I was like, you know what, let me just read and see. And I actually finished the whole the whole book of Genesis in two days because it, it, it was like, it, you know, like I was reading the Bible for the first time. Like the stories just became so, wow, you know, it, it was like, you know, an eye opening that, you know, the Bible actually has such amazing truths in itself. It doesn't need any other thing to back it up. It's in itself. It is an amazing book. Absolutely. Because, because it's God's word. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th thanks for that. And I think that 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 brings us on to on to something else. And and it's I suppose a question that that um, many Seventh Day Adventists ask, and many people that 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 know about the Seventh Day Adventist doctrine have asked about Ellen G. White. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. we believe that she is a prophet. She was inspired by God um, through visions. Um, and uh and all sorts of things and she's written many many books and and i suppose one can get into the zone of reading ellen g white books instead of the bible and there's like you said mm. there's a great danger in that um so how how do we approach the bible and ellen g white where how how do the inspired writings fit in the bible if it's not part of the bible itself how does that work uh, Josh? Uh, that's an interesting point. Um, sorry, by the way, my Wi-Fi cut. I'm not sure what the problem was, but I'm back. Um, sure. so, so the concept of lesser light and greater light is, is very interesting. When Here's an example. So if, if, if we do not... How do I... <laughs> my God, this is confusing. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you keep thinking about okay. that. I'm going to come no, no, back. No, no, no. I got it, I got it, I got it. If the Bible, if we've been given the Bible, right, as a greater light, and, and if that's all that we need for salvation, then yeah. why the lesser light? What is the purpose of Ellen White? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And think of, think of yourself in a tunnel, and it's pitch dark. You cannot see your way out of the tunnel. You don't know which way to go. If you are trying to get out of the tunnel to get into the greater light, you need a flashlight or a torch, which is a lesser light, which can guide you on your journey out of the tunnel into the greater light. Mm -hmm. And I think somebody mentioned it earlier that if the Bible is black and white, then Ellen White adds color. Mm -hmm. She does not change what the Bible says. It's still the same show. It's just that now we move from black and white to color. It's mm. as simple as that. Mm. That's, that's very interesting. I want someone to read Isaiah 8 verse 20 again. We read it just um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I, want to I think it bears uh, reading again because this is essential. And it, it builds on to what Josh, Josh was talking about um, regarding the lesser light and the greater light. Of course, that's, that comes from Ellen White um, mm. where she said, that her writings are a lesser light to the greater light. In other words, she pointed to the Bible as the authoritative source. She did not replace the Bible, and she made that very clear. But what does Isaiah 8 verse 20 say? Is who's, who's got that for us? I'm reading from the New International Version again, and it says, To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Okay. Um, in another version, in the New King James Version, it'll say it's because there is no light in them. And I think that speaks to Josh's point. Um, if you go back in history, um, when Ellen White started um, uh, getting, when she was called to be a prophetess by God, um, it was in the mid-1800s, wasn't it? 
And that, mm. was toward, that is toward the end of what we call the, the Dark Ages, isn't it? Mm. Um, uh, and that, that was where the, the, the Protestant movement was, was already in full force. Mm. Um, but much of, of the, the Word of God had been, had been basically kept away from the people. That that it was the dark ages, you know. Only a few people had access to the Bible. It was only until the guy started Martin Luther, and uh, I know in, in in France and I think in England as well, the, the guy started um, rewriting the Bible into other languages. That it started getting out there. But in that process of the dark ages, many truths were missing, and so I like the idea of the the dark tunnel. Um, and and while while the early reformers uh, discovered certain of the truths which which made that initial split, there was still lots to learn. We almost had to we almost had to relearn the truths over time. Mm. And um, and it was around 1844, around there, where where um, uh, where Ellen White got her first vision, wasn't it? Like, I, I don't remember the exact date. But it wasn't. It was around that space, um, and uh, and she was a lesser light, the torch to the greater light. How do, how do we approach the difference? I think it it says here, yeah, you know, just on Thursdays in Thursday's lesson, it says her writings are not an addition to scripture, but are subject to holy scripture. She never intended her writing to take the place of scripture. Instead, she elevated the Bible as the only standard for faith and practice. I think it's also important in Ellen G. White's writing. She always, always says the same thing. Her is hers. Her writings are not to be taken apart from the Bible. You can't read Ellen G. White's books without having studied the Bible for yourself. You know, her books are just really, it just kind of explains or makes it a bit plainer to us if we can't understand something in, in the Bible or, you know, maybe it's it's the Greek. And also, you know, when uh, to the point of um, studying the Bible and using the different languages, the Greek and the Hebrew, in the original languages, in Ellen G. White's writing, she actually... Um, kind of explains the, the, the different Greek words and the Hebrew words and the history that she goes back to also. So I think she it's not to take it apart from the Bible, but to also just help us humans, if we don't do the research for ourselves, just help us really understand where the Bible is coming from, the history of it. Yeah, absolutely. Rush? Another thing um, the, which I really, really enjoyed when I discovered this was how Ellen White makes the Bible alive, come alive, especially in the Old Testament. If you read the conflict series, which starts with Patriarchs and Prophets, and it goes all the way through to the Great Controversy, it basically covers the whole Bible. And the first few books, the Patriarchs and Prophets, the Prophets and Kings, it, it really, Ellen White brings out facts that the Bible doesn't include because of space. I mean, the Bible includes the necessary that we need to be saved, and, and that's it. But there are certain facts and interesting stories that we discover um, in Ellen White, reading the Bible so much more interesting, especially the Old Testament parts, because you can, you know, read from Ellen White what she has to say on it. Yeah, and I, and I, 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 I see what you're saying there, Josh, because um, if, you, if you read her, her, her writings, you will find that all of her writings are is in context around the word of God. So especially in the conflict series, you'll find that it'll say this chapter is based on this, these Bible texts. And then as you read, um, she, she, she will talk about something and then she will, she will bring in where in the Bible, what she's talking about. So it's, it all, it's all, it all points back to the Bible. And if you read that in, in conjunction with the Bible and you're reading it together, it's just it's in perfect harmony all, all along the way, which is why, going back to Isaiah 8 verse 20, if it speaks not according to the law and the testimonies, in other words, if it doesn't speak according to the word of God, yeah. then reject it. Mm -hmm. But we'll find that Ellen White, everything that she says is perfectly in harmony with the word of God uh, along the way. 
Um, and in fact, her, her objective is to point people to the word of God, um, which is very interesting. Um, again, if you, if you look at the prophets, the prophets pointed to God. Thus saith the Lord. This. God is saying this. He's pointing people to God. He's, they, they, they call people out of wickedness into, into repentance back to the Lord. And, and we find that Ellen White, again, she'll speak, but then she points people back to the word, back to the word, back to the word the whole time. And I think that's, that's very important. So, so, so going to Sola Scriptura as, as the, the main uh, theme and topic, what are we talking about? We're talking about the word of God, using that as our sole and ultimate authority on doctrine and beliefs. Mm. Um, yeah. Can we get a little bit more color? Can we get a little bit more understanding through the spirit of prophecy? Absolutely. Are there things for this generation that the spirit of prophecy has revealed to us? Um, I think so. Through, for example, the health message. There are certain things that once again um, is elevated through, through revelation by God for a generation at the end. But again, mm -hmm. Does our health message that, that um, was revealed to, to Ellen White through the Spirit of Prophecy, does that confer with the Bible? 100%. Our Bibles are a temple of God. Uh, I mean, our bodies are the temple of God and the dwelling place of the Spirit. And so, and so it speaks to the health message uh, very clearly. So, um, again, once again, it points back to the Bible and the Bible alone. Are there any other thoughts on the topic? I think we've, we've kind of covered most of it. Um, any other closing, closing remarks or thoughts? Okay. Um, I think it's just worth mentioning. I think the, the one thing that really stood out to me was just a last um, quote from Ellen White. And it says, God has not passed by his people and chosen one solitary man here and another there as the only ones worthy to be entrusted with his truth. He does not give one man new light contrary to the established faith of the body. Let none be self-confident as though God had given them special light over their brethren. One accepts some new and original idea which does not seem to conflict with the truth. He dwells upon it until it seems to him to be clothed with beauty and importance, for Satan has power to give this false appearance. At last, it becomes the all-absorbing theme, the one great point around which everything centers, and the truth is uprooted from the heart. I warn you to beware of these side issues, whose tendency is to divert the mind from the truth. Error is never harmless. It never, sancti it never sanctifies, but always brings confusion and dissension. And that was a quote from last day events. And wow. I think that's also quite profound. Yeah, that is indeed. Thank you for sharing that note. And a very good note it was. Um, thanks for, for joining with the discussion. Uh, I just want to invite the viewers, um, if you wanted to just drop a couple of uh, notes or comments in the, in the comment box, we appreciate it. Um, and also, yeah, if you wanted to drop us an email, on our uh, email address which will pop up in a minute as well uh please do so thank you for your time can i ask someone to close in prayer who would like to close in prayer for us liam can you close in prayer for us sure thank you pray. heavenly father we thank you for this lesson and we thank you that you have given us the bible that we may understand you and form a close relationship with you and we ask that as we continue in our walk of life with you, that we continue to study the word and grow closer. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.